This is 91.3 FM, WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts, the Dr. Chris Radio of Horror program. Tonight on Radio of Horror, we have a distinguished man in our studio with us. <laughs> Hasn't been on the show in several years. We have location manager, producer, writer, director, pretty much a jack of all trades of German films. <laughs> <laughs> and Boston films. Das stimmt. Yes. We have Josh Schneider in the studio with us. The last time as he'll be leaving us for Germany. Hello, hello. Why are you leaving for Germany? I have married a gorgeous German girl, and we're going to go make some German movies in Germany. And you've been working on Germany films. I have. German, excuse me. You've been working on German films been working on German romance films, that film on the North Shore of Massachusetts. That's so weird. <laughs> and uh, they air, they're like Sunday night movies for older... The Hallmark Channel well, Yeah, they're basically Hallmark movies. But in Germany. But in Germany, yeah. Are they, li- are they literally the type of plot line that you would see like Dean Cain in or something like that? Because you know he does like a lot of Hallmark movies. Oh yeah, he's the king of Hallmark right now. Oh seriously, yeah. He's or uh, Dean Caning all over the place. There are 46 goddamn Christmas movies coming out this month. Did you work on any of them? <laughs> no. Okay. Right. I have not worked on any Christmas movies, and I have not worked on any uh, horror movies besides my own, you know, short films and stuff. The like Pink Sock and stuff. Yeah. How did you get involved working all the all these German movies? I, I, as you know, I worked retail for three years. Three. Four wonderful. years. Two thousand twelve to two thousand sixteen. No, no. You left in 2010 to twenty thirteen. Oh, 2010, okay. Mm-hmm. And it was soul-crushing and horrible. Uh, I went to school for film, and that can't get you a real job unless you're willing to do retail. So I I quit. I said I'd rather make no money and be broke than have to work 45 hours with the public. And the, central... the amazing commercials you made at uh, Stop Up Movies. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Terrible. I don't even know if they're still on YouTube. Yes, they are. Oh. <laughs> Great. Um, the the best one is because I'm in it. Uh, is the uh, the one uh, with uh, the saw the the saw killer the scream the scream killer is like playing the prank phone calls. It was scream meets Fast and Furious. Yes, right? I, I think you're in the ghost face costume. I am. Yeah, <laughs> and we had a wrestling match and <laughs> terrible, terrible. They were fun to make. Yeah. I think they were fun, but movie stop is dead. It's gone. Pretty much, yeah. It is, it is 100% gone, isn't it? Oh, it's, yeah. It's wonderful. Dude, what's funny is that uh, I remember you asking me at one time, at, uh, where do you know where there's any blockbuster videos to that, <laughs> like, you know, with the Shelby good is because your boss wanted to, like, expand Movie Stop and do right. other places. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. But they're not, like, locations people would go to to buy a movie. Like, one was on Route 20. It's right next to uh, Little Caesars. Um, Ooh, and uh, who there knows? you go. That's a good There's one in West Bolston, just before the West Bolston Cinema. It's right, it's right at the top of the hill where the Shaw's, Super Shaw's or Stop and Shop is. You know what I'm talking about? No. And then somebody put a photo. Did you, did you ever meet makeup artist Billy Coyne? I don't think so. Really? Okay. He's been at Rocket Shock like every year that you were setting up shop. I mean, maybe. I, I'm, I have a terrible I'll probably show you a picture. For people. Um, and he posted a photo of like a movie stop. I'm oh, sorry, a, a, a blockbuster video that looked like it was uh, on the set of George of the Jungle. It was like there were like trees and vines and like bushes just grown up around the doors. And the, the store door. was still open? No. Oh, okay. I was no, gonna but s- the blockbuster logo was still there. And it was like the lights are still on. And like he was like, who? Where is I was like, where is this? I had I didn't see his response yet about where it is. But were the movies still in there? Can you see him through no, the window? No, it's, oh. it's empty. But the, it's one of those block. It's one of those locations that just leaves the fucking lights on all the time. It's terrible. But it's so funny to see like the so video with like the the vines and the like life has grown. <laughs> oh yeah, like the the documentary show like after after humans or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, it's like oh, where's Will Smith to walk past yeah, gonna, it with a say, German uh, Shepherd? Will Smith's uh, movie um, that came out in, uh, what was it, like 2007? I, I Am Legend. I Am Legend, which was promoting the Batman versus Superman movie 10 years before it came out. <laughs> Do you remember that in the billboard in the background? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. In Times Square. <laughs> it was the exact type of logo they would use, the Superman shield within the bat symbol. <laughs> Smart. Uh, but you worked on a lot of uh, 
just before we get into that, uh, going back into the German films um, and what I was saying about the Christmas movies. So no Christmas movies. No Christmas movies. Um, and I mentioned there's 46 Christmas movies that come out this year, and that's a true horror bull fact. Um, <laughs> one of them in particular, I do, I did kind of want to watch, and I think it, I could still find it probably on their website. Um, it's some type of competing toy toy store movie. Melissa Joan Hart owns one store. Mario Lopez owns another store. <sighs> what and a then, cast! And then um, what a cast! The guy from the Breakfast Club, Sylvan tells me, comes in. Judd Nelson? No, Michael C. Hall owns the big corporate <laughs> store, and he moves into town. And, and so Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez have to team up, put aside their differences, team up to take down the big wig. And I'm like, I would watch the shit out of that just because it's got three people in it I grew up watching. Hasn't that, I feel like that has been done, that I don't think exact storyline. I, I don't know. No, right? But of course, in the end, they fall in love. Because, of course. Know, of course. <laughs> fall. <laughs> you got to have that, you know, kissing as the snow starts to come down, some Christmas lights in the background. Yeah. I'm not even looking it up on IMDb to find out exactly yeah. the cast list just because it's so ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, Dean Cain does a lot of those uh, type of movies. But So you do the Hallmark romance movies of the week. We do. They're based on uh, books from a British novelist. Turned into German. And the Germans have got their hands on it. They get big ratings, actually. This is, uh, I think, the last one we did was episode, episode. They're, they're independent <laughs> TV movies. So, like, none of Made them have TV anything. Movies. To, yeah. Uh, I think 35 or 36 of them at this point. Any American actors in them that we would know? I don't Christina know Kleba about. has been in at least two of them. Oh, but yeah. I mean, if you know, if for anyone not familiar with Christina Kleba is, she's a like international actress. She's mm-hmm. not just an American actress. She, you need, without going into a big thing about Christina Kleba, because she's going to come on the show at some point. Uh, we've, uh, we were at Rocket Shock talking about it for a really long time, and we've tweeted to each other. So it's just a matter of her schedule, and she's insanely busy. But that woman has done everything except for going to outer space. <laughs> but then I think I remember hearing she's actually been in outer space. Not what? to the moon, but someone told me she did go up into space. Okay, but I so might she's be done it all. Yeah, I don't think she's been to the center of the earth or fought mole men, but she has. She speaks like well, three right. languages. Let me know when you fight the mole men, Christina. Yes, um... But she's got some international claims. That's really cool because she was, uh, for horror fans, she was in the first Rob Zombie Halloween. First Rob Zombie Halloween. She was just in, uh, what is it, Tales of Halloween? Correct. And she's in Friday the 13th, the video game, as really? one of the uh, characters you play. And it's is it does it look like her? Is it? I think she's the voice of it. I don't think she's the model because it doesn't quite look like her um, as much as I think she pointed out to me that that's her voice. So... Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, she's she's on there. Um, I, I don't, I mean, we, we get sometimes, we have a lot of, all the extras, of course, are American. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we'll get some featured extras. Bostonians. Bostonians, who, you know, it's always the same people every year, too. That's cool. We do four to six of these every summer. Oh, my God. Are you and, serious? Oh, dude, we, it's a grind. Does it take... That not that long to make them because they're 20, made for TV movies. Twenty to twenty-one days to pump out an hour and a half Piece German romance. Oh, they're wonderful. What are you talking about? They're the bread and butter, man. <laughs> don't don't crap on Katie. Who? <laughs> the Katie Ford. Who's Katie Ford? That's the name of all the. That's the British novelist. Is Katie oh, Ford? Oh, okay. So every title is you know. Katie Ford presents. Du und ich. Oh, okay. So that's her name on the top of every single one of these movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Du und ich, which looked like um, that. Oh, there, yeah, there's Kristen Cleve. She's in um, Du und ich. Du und ich. Yes. Um, what is the name of the American romance novelist that's had like every book made into a goddamn movie? Dang Nicholas you. Sparks. Ah, yeah. Because the poster for this looks like a Nicholas Sparks poster. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen the posters. Oh, here's one right here. It's got a dude holding a woman. Oh, the yeah. behind him. Of course. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get much more cheesy Well, Nicholas that. Sparks doesn't have a, a lock on, you know, cliched romance posters. <laughs> or, uh, oh, I know Claire McKay. Uh, I, I do not. Oh, yeah, that's right. She was also in... Um, uh, Wolfenstein 2, Christine Cleve. She was Frau Helena. I think that's the the fat German woman in the movie who's the daughter of the main Nazi bad guy of the game. 
she's like there i just got to a part of the video game where she's tired there's a um there's a foxy cleopatra kind of character in the game very <laughs> black exploitation who keeps calling her a nazi every five minutes and she finally like is fed up with it so she slaps the black woman and starts strangling her calling her saying to her whatever that a nazi is like a piece of shit and like you know, like, like, you are better than a Nazi being a strong black woman and stuff like that. And, like, nobody stops her because she knows, they know she's not going to kill her. But she's sick and tired of being called a Nazi because she's proven that she's betrayed the Nazis to work with the Americans' resistance against them in the game. And then, of course, she points to the, 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 the uh, um, one of the other characters in the game who, uh, your character, BJ Blask- Blask- Blaskowitz, wa- is going to use the sub to go the... Uh, His name sub- is Blaskowitz? Blaskowitz. Blaskowitz. BJ, yeah, he's the main character in most of the Wolfenstein games. BJ Blaskowitz. You are going to get the sub and go on a mission. You open the sub door and the uh, the, the uh, her and like one of the other characters are fucking in the sub. And they're like, oh, do you need the sub? And he's like, do you? And you're like, do you mind? <laughs> do you want to wipe that up first? <laughs> But he starts, like, later on in the game, like, flirting with another character. It gets very, like, soap opera-like, and you're like, what is this? Days of our lives within a video game? <laughs> so if this is the character I'm thinking of, Frau Helena, then uh, that's funny because Christina, you know, can obviously do a German accent because she speaks German. Oh, yeah. I don't know where she was born or... or well, she's or half what? German, half yeah. Sicilian, and oh, okay. as well as Hungarian and French. But she was raised in New York. She lived in New York, Germany, France, and Italy. So, you know, she's very – she she can speak all those languages. It's very uh, intimidating to go to Europe because as Americans, we are not taught every goddamn language under the sun. And in Europe – They are. They all know – Because they are the interconnecting countries. Three-plus languages, and you just feel like a total dummy. So I was right. She's the voice of Jenny Myers. Obviously, a take on Michael Myers in the game, not the face actress doing the motion capture like Kane Hodder does. Okay. All right. Um, and she's going to be in Hellboy, the upcoming Hellboy uh, re- re- redo. No, I wouldn't call it a remake. Is the chimp not in doing that? The origin story they said. What? Is the chimp in that? The what? Ron Perlman, the chimp? No, it's the guy, it's the sheriff from uh, the Stranger Things. <laughs> you didn't I'll, know that? I'll skip it. I'm good. No. I'm good. That yeah. guy from Stranger Things, he's, why? I don't get it. I, he looks good in the makeup and the costume. Oh, there's already photos yeah, there's of there's photos. Yeah, here, look. The plot line is Hellboy comes to England where he must defeat Merlin's consort and Nemu, the Blood Queen, but the battle will bring about the end of the world, a fate he desperately tries to turn away. Just let it happen. And it's actually going to be based on a, a Hellboy story written by Mignola. Okay. The poster was designed by Mignola, Big Mike Mignola. Mignola or Mignola? I don't know if the G is silent or not. Is he Italian? I don't know. Mignola? I don't know. I don't but know. I've met him a couple times. Um, I'm just not great on uh, name pronunciations. But it's also written by Christopher Golden, who if you've been to any con in New England, for anyone listening, Christopher Golden is at most uh, horror conventions or book conventions. More book conventions than horror conventions. But also Boston Comic Con. He's a really well known uh longtime writer of uh horror fantasy novels as well as a collaborator with uh Mignola. Alright, I mean maybe maybe it'll be good. I just I like continuity. Mila of- Jovovich is gonna play the Blood Queen. Ian God. McShane plays uh Professor Broom, uh aka Hellboy's father. So this by the way is gonna take place in the uh in the fifties. Oh, okay. So this uh, could still be kind of in continuity with the other movies. If if that happens, then I'm all for it. Uh, because, but I just uh, I Professor Professor Broom is not killed until like the first Hellboy movie. But obviously that takes place in 20, 2004, whenever the movie was. Right. So um, Daniel Day Kim, uh, Penelope Mitchell, uh, Kristen Cleave, like I said, uh, and other people I don't quite recognize. Sasha Lane, I think I recognize. B J Blaskovitz. <laughs> <laughs> More people should name their kids BJ. <laughs> I can't. Don't forget it was the 90s when they came up with the character. Uh, but back to Josh Schneider. We talked so much about our love of Christine Cleave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you've gone to horror conventions, then you basically know everything that we're talking about with her because she is everything we say she is and more. She's very nice, yeah. Very no, nice. She was great on set. Um, but I will mention these things to her that you said if she remembers who you are when she comes on the show. Very doubtful. 
Very doubtful. She gave me a signed picture from Halloween oh, that's when cool. we were on set for Katie Ford. Oh, that's nice. Because a whole bunch of other people on set were like, oh, Josh really likes horror movies. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these Katie Ford movies. I've, well, I've done 17. Only 10 are listed on oh IMDb. Oh, God. Uh, four years I've done those. So I got hired as a PA my first year. I know some romance podcasts that you should go on because they would probably love to talk to you because they probably eat this shit up. Uh, well, Do I you mean, love it? I mean, is this like something you really It's love? great. I mean, everybody on set for the most part, um, you're with these people for 14 hours a day uh, for, I mean, I just did eight months. We did four movies this summer, eight months from uh, of of just working with these people and every year it's it's most of the same people so you so, go back and you you hang out you party and you go to work and you just bang it out and it takes about 20 21 days to to film one of these which is pretty decent uh pretty quick for a feature length film when so you've done 17 of these films um but you didn't you weren't the uh you're the assistant location manager. What does that mean? So the location manager can't find a, a site. He asks you to chip in to go find a site. So normally on a on a like on Stronger, there were which eight, is which is a Jake Gyllenhaal movie based on Jeff Bauman's book about the Boston Marathon bombing. Okay, which you were also on Patriot Day. I was not on Patriots Day. I was oh. on I was on Stronger. They were filming at the same time. They were filming two Boston Marathon bombing movies. Okay. And we filmed in a lot of the same exact same places. I'm in a movie. Well, I'm not in a movie. I'm the uh, I'm the uh, photographer right now. It's filmed whenever we can get together. It's kind of one of those films or whatever about Bigfoot. And the uh, the main star of the movie, she was a uh, background extra in Patriots Day, uh, which led to her now being in the Amy Schumer movie that was being filmed here in Boston. The Slender Man movie that got filmed here in Boston. Actually filmed at a buddy of mine's house. Yes, and New Mut- and she was on set every week, every day for New Mutants for the six weeks they filmed here before they left for Vancouver. I was like, Jesus Christ. And she was like, that was the best thing ever. I was like, who are you standing in for? Macy Williams. So whenever Macy Williams wasn't there, they had to do like other shots for whatever, you know, however technicality was stand-ins work or whatever. Mm-hmm. She was Macy Williams' body double. The best part of working on movies is <coughs> if you get a good crew, you can hang out with everybody, and then the catering. Mm, she said she loved that too. Oh, the catering! <laughs> I get on Stronger. Man, I must have gained about twenty pounds. It was. Oh yeah, because that's a Hollywood movie, right? It's, it was big time, and they kept ordering food every day. But as I was saying, on Stronger, we had an eight-person location crew. And on these... To find a location, you need eight people? Well, it's not just finding the locations. It's, it's uh, managing them. Like oh, when you go okay. to film it, it's working out the deals. It's mm-hmm. talking to everybody in the neighborhood around whatever the location is. But you at the office with phone calls, or do you actually have to go knocking on doors? A lot of times you go out knocking on doors. So um, my first year on Katie Ford, I was just a PA. My second and third year, I was not a great assistant location manager. And then this past year, they had me scout... So I found the locations, and then I was the you know assistant location manager when it came to do they pay organize you to them. drive around? Because I'm assuming this oh, is yeah. a lot of driving around, going, oh that doesn't look like it work. That looks like it work. Or it's great. It's I'm great. assuming it's also like probably okay, uh, Josh. We need to find a cliffside overlooking an ocean for us to shoot at for this like the romantic scene of all time. That's every. <laughs> Every single one of these Katie Ford movies is <laughs> we need a cliffside, ocean, street, something. They don't want it to be the same one, just have it continuity. We have shot on Atlantic Road in Gloucester, which is beautiful. One of the uh, most beautiful roads in Massachusetts, maybe maybe the country. It's gorgeous. Uh-huh. We have shot there probably 15 or 16 out of these 17 movies okay. for just driving shots or, or whatever. And I don't know anything about Katie Ford. <laughs> Apparently nobody who's going to be listening to this will probably know anything about Katie Ford. No. If you do, please leave a comment in the comment lot, section about Katie Ford. A lot of them are on YouTube. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, it's stuff but for But is there older continuity ladies. between the films? Is, this, is no. there a Katie Ford cinematic universe? <laughs> kind of, kind of. So, so sometimes, because most directors will do two, uh-huh. and then we'll bring in another uh, the Germans will switch out. The Americans will stay the the same crew. Okay. They'll bring in a new director, new DP, new uh, sound guy. You know all the ger- all the big uh, positions mm-hmm. are the Germans. Okay. 
and then you know the electricians and locations are people from the area so they'll they'll switch out and so a lot of the directors will they'll make their first movie and then during the filming of the second one they'll have they'll throw something in that oh if you remember this one oh i saw that in the last one so okay. we just filmed one where they're in an rv for the entire movie so it was like german national lampoon's vacation and then in the second movie that uh, this director, Frauke, uh, directed, she had the RV, like, drive in the background. So it, it, kind of, not officially. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. When you're um... – shit, I had my question. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. I had it before, before I asked the other one. Um... Okay, uh, I got it. Here we go. <laughs> um, what do you find it easier to do, working on an American Hollywood movie or a German Hallmark of the Week film? Lifetime week. More lifetime than In Hallmark. terms of ease? Yeah. What's the true Hollywood horror? The Hollywood one's a lot longer days. Of course. But you also get overtime and their union. Mm -hmm. These union. ones, the German... Are you union? I am union. You got a SAG or whatever it is? No, or? God, no. I, I Atsi. Oh. So the German ones will film for, depending on the director, most times location manager has to be there to open and to close. Mm. Oh, so wow. we have the longest day. So it's like being a store manager again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very much so, yeah. And you get to deal with the public. Hooray. Because they're not all whack jobs. Um, but you don't have a quota you have to fill with, like, effing like in subscriptions and, and movie stop uh no but i do have to go door to door sometimes a couple days before we film in like a neighborhood or wherever yeah knock let everybody know hand them a little flyer oh hey just to let you know we're gonna be filming in the air i put on a whole uh do they get pit do they get pissed at you sometimes it depends it's like oh it's gonna fuck up my week i'm gonna have to go to work Certain time, there's always somebody I mean, that people hates just you. Righteous assholes for no reason other than it's like yes. oh, your yeah. wife just broke up with them and left, and now you're at the door letting them know you have to go around this route to get around the fucking film crew. Yeah, no, people don't like it, but it it, it depends on where. So you should read, um, if you if you're filming in Boston, yeah. or Salem, or any place that there's been a ton of filming, uh -huh. people are less inclined to be nice. And a lot of times they'll, you know, crank music up or something to, to fuck with you, knowing that you, you, you'll pay the money to be like, hey, can just for an hour, can you turn it down? I'll give you a hundred bucks or whatever, which is an asshole thing to do, everybody. Don't, don't be that asshole. But that's why we try and find towns. You actually have to pay these people, bribe them off to... Yeah, of course. That's ridiculous. That's, that's half my job is Where bullshitting people. Where, and, you have to just go to the director and be like, I no, need the, get, the black car to go take money get, out of the bank. You get petty cash from production. Oh, okay. But How much petty cash do they give you? Is like walking it around. Depends on, it depends on the movie. Okay. Because I know, I know, like, um, uh, I have never gotten this before because I've never worked on anything big. But uh, <clears throat> uh, there's a such thing as, like, walking around cash when you're doing, like, a like a, a cameo appearance in a movie. You know what I mean? You may not be the big name star, but you've got, you know, you're going to be, you know, you are brought in. Uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Smith talked about it. You know, him and Jay, uh, Jason Mewes got walking around cash when they were on Scream 3. Because they were on Scream 3 for two weeks filming that one freaking 30 second to one minute scene where they come out of the movie theater. I'm like, eh, the fucking movie. Hey, it's two weeks. Chung. It took two weeks for that? It was like a week. Yeah, something like that. It was like a week or That's whatever. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and uh, they got walking around cash like every day, which is $300 each. Jason was like, what is this? He's like, That's funny to do something on the set. <laughs> it, is, it is a whole thing. And you'll... Good old you, Harvey Weinstein. Oh, you're going to get Weinstein. If you if you work on depending on the movie, you'll the actors will get, I'm sure, yeah. some kind of, you know, float or something to but you'll any movie, they always try and nickel I don't care how big the movie is. Yeah. They will try and nickel and dime stuff when it comes to filming, but then you oh, well, the lead actors in a house and it, they're renting it for 20 grand for a week or oh, the cast and crew, or the cast and the director, all went out for dinner. Are there really came to like, like three, that? three That's grand. Ridiculous. Of course, I have it's a friend Hollywood, that worked man. on like Supernatural, and they said that uh, 
They said nobody on Super as, as long as that show's been on that TV for thirteen goddamn seasons. You that, know, it's still on, huh? It's still on. It's not getting canceled yet. I've seen uh, more episodes. The, the two main stars, Sam and Dean, Jared and Jensen Paddle, Jared, Jared, Jared and Jensen, um, have their trailers. They've had their trailers since like season like two or three. The same way, and their trailers are brought like everywhere, and they don't rent a house, they don't rent hotels. It's their trailers because they've basically turned their trailers into a second home because okay. they're filming there six months out of the year, you know. And it's like that their trailers need to be the way they need to be because they're away from their friends and family for so long. So, and uh, they've never been like, "We want a hotel now," or "Let's rent a house" or anything like that. It's just keep our trailers the way we want them. That's all we want. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, I mean, they, they sound they, they, no. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Year, they sound they like they don't want to rent anything else, but they want their trailers to be like kept in tip top shape. And with, they they run. sound like a producer's dream, you know? Because <laughs> well, they're also producers of the show now. I mean. All right, well there you go. Yeah, they know that it's it's TV. You don't have it's and it's not HBO, so it's not Game of Thrones. You don't have a you know eight million dollars an episode to. That was like ten million dollars an episode. Who knows what it is at this point? <laughs> I mean, this past season, I heard it was the highest cost season like the, the the biggest budget ever was this past season well and then like, they should have the added fucking, an episode or two so it didn't seem with, so rushed with the ice lake and the extras and the walkers and the the wall coming down give it and, away guys sorry and how fast that guy ran yeah. to go get everybody <laughs> and send a bird and oh that later that afternoon everybody's Did back you the continuity of that show got sped up it takes an entire what two three seasons for them to cross yeah half the planet to get to finally to uh wherever they are or or, or how long does it take for somebody to get to the wall you know what I mean? Or get back months. to the wall. Months. Months. Entire season or two seasons. In, no, now so it's... Two episodes for, for John to get to, uh, from the wall to uh, where the uh, the dragon queen is. <laughs> I don't know. I, and what is it? Six episodes for the next season? I heard they're going to be extra long episodes. They better be. They have to be because next season's it. And is he ever going to release this sixth book or what? <sighs> yeah. What he's, the hell? He's got a new TV show in development. Come on. He does. Just where's the books? Based on another book series. All right. So now he's like executive producer of two freaking things. Which, by the way, when I say executive producer or producer, I don't know which he is. So you can correct it. I don't care. He is more involved in that show (laughs) than if you see Stan Lee's name in the freaking next Captain America movie or the Avengers. Stan Lee has nothing to do with those movies. It's just the fact that he created the characters, so he puts his name in there. They do not go to Stan's house. Stan. What do you think of this script? Do you do you think we should be doing anything different with the Avengers and Captain America and stuff like that? He's old and rich. What the hell does he care what they do with it? Whatever. I'll be dead next year anyway. Go ahead. Oh, you want to make uh, Captain America? Uh, I have more belief when they put Jeff Loeb or Brian Michael Bendis' his name in like the Jessica Jones show because because Brian Michael Bendis created the character and he's pretty active in Hollywood when it comes to stuff like that or Jeff Loeb when you see him on like the Arrow or the Flash or whatever or Mike Carlin who I've had on the show you know he's the editor he was editor of Superman comics for a really long time I mean Stanley's great and I like the whole oh he's the watcher but... was he a watcher though in Guardians he was just a guy he was just an astronaut talking to them yeah like, I was expecting him to, like, unzip his face and he would have a big, giant head and, you know. Yeah, but that, that, that was supposed to answer that question at long last. Was Stan Lee the Watcher? No, he, is, he was just a guy in cameos. And that scene was to give us the Watchers, finally. And that's the whole thing we're not even going to continue talking about because... The Watchers are perverts. I'm convinced. I am convinced the Watchers are not watching the good deeds on Earth. They so just... you think they'll be on the next uh, celebrity scandal list of... I'm waiting for that to happen in comics, by the way. <laughs> the Watchers are all the people that worked with Harvey Weinstein and didn't say anything for 30 years. <laughs> what are the Watchers really watching? Porno. Who watches the Watchmen should have applied to the Watchers. Yeah. So you've done 10, uh, sorry, you've done 17 of these Katie Ford movies. Oh, yeah. That's just unbelievable. How many books are there? Uh, have you read them? No. <laughs> Why would I read those? I read, they give me the sense they like, give me the script to read, but I don't. I'm not. I don't need to go back and read the source like, okay, material. So I'm reading the story. I'm reading the book. You go to the director. I was like, I read the book, okay. And, and they, they talk about this cliffside has dandelions all over it. I don't think the cliffside. Really is. <laughs> and then you just become an expert. <laughs> Have we, you met her? Yeah. No, she came uh, two years ago. It was her birthday, and she came to set, and they had a cake for her on set. Uh-huh. And she's she's an older woman. And so me and all the other degenerates uh, on the How crew from America, old, old, 
much older than I, but a lovely woman. Okay, that's good. And so she showed up, and everybody just kind of awkwardly stopped our terrible conversations about Weinsteining. And uh, we all had to shake her hand. Oh, happy birthday. Nice to meet you. She did not. You weren't having a terrible conversation about Harvey Weinstein two years ago. By it was the way. a. It was a. <laughs> it was a joke. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. The continuity of this story does not match up with current events. <laughs> or does it? Unless you knew something about Harvey Weinstein two years ago. Everybody knew about Harvey Weinstein. Everybody. Yeah, that's the problem mm-hmm. that people are having today. Oh yeah, but. Regardless, let, let's let's move on. So she's a very nice author and a very nice person in real life. That's good, and she's appreciative of the movies being made about her uh, novels. Mm-hmm. She probably was also very appreciative of the check that she got for the rights. Who isn't? Yeah, uh, the money is the most like important that. Do they thing. They just buy it outright, or is it like they buy the rights in whole, and then she gets like a residual check? I could not tell you. I do, that's that's production. That's a whole uh, level. That's, that. that's executive information. Do you want to do I, they anything don't tell else the... with this film series besides just be the location scout manager? No. Or lo- assistant location scout? No. I'm, I still write my own stuff, and uh, what my part? wife and I are going to be working on uh, something that we can sell in the same vein. Did your wife work K-84s? on these movies too? She does. And then we met on... What is she? Uh, she is... Uh, in America, she would be the unit production manager in Germany... Um, she is the Auf, Auf Nama Leitern. And what is that? The same the thing? Unit production. Okay. Did, um, uh, God, you should, you should have brought her in too. Cause she's in Germany right now. Oh, no, she's in Germany. We'll call her up on Skype. What time is it in Germany it right is, now? It is, <laughs> it is past midnight. You definitely should know the time zone of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's six, six hours ahead. I also kind of never thought you'd get married. No, a lot of people didn't think I would get married. <laughs> That's I didn't best. think I would get married. No. But I met her on these. That's, Yeah. It was the most romantic thing about these movies, that's, as far as I'm that's concerned. That's true, the romantic movies, mm-hmm. and you met your wife, and now you're married. And now you're leaving us, unfortunately. This is the year of everyone I know leaving. Like, you're leaving, Sarah Michelle's le- left. Where'd she go? She went to Denmark, I believe. Really? Yeah. Is she still with uh, Rook? Really? Great yeah. great art in the the new Fulci comic. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, she's. I don't know what she's doing, but yeah, she left. Hey, Denmark's nice. You can follow her on Twitter, Sarah Michelle. Working on these type of films, and they're being done so fast, is it a lot of, like, hurry up and wait, hustle, 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 hustle? It's uh, Do the tensions all... ever rise really high? Do the arguments and stuff like that? Yes. I mean, what's the bad about working on these? The good sounds... The good, you don't have a lot of time. The good, clearly, is you met your wife, and you got married, and you moved into Germany with her. Yeah, I got that a lot of... is the only good story you could say that came out of this other than like oh well this was nice and i got to see this part of massachusetts never got to see before but that's the one true good story because you're working on a bunch of silly romance stories and you got this romantic relationship out of it that you got married to so well what's the horror well i'd like to add i I got my career because of these movies i wasn't working on any american stuff or anything like that i always thought you had a career that i know from the look on your face was kind of yeah, it wasn't great. No. But because the location manager and because of the American uh, producer on these movies, I am now in the union, and so I give a lot of credit to those guys. Of course, I met my wife. It's the greatest thing that could have happened to me. But I got a lot of friends on these movies too. So uh, there's a lot of good from these, but like anything, it's it's stressful. Mm-hmm. you know. And you don't get a lot of time. Like on a Hollywood movie, you would have months to prepare on these there's a week in between each movie. So you'll be working on stuff. You'll be on set working and then trying to push ahead, work on the next movie or the next location. And you can't always get everything that everybody wants. I mean, because you're filming all these. Why, why are you filming all these movies here in Massachusetts? Is it because of the, uh, the tax break thing? Is that why Germany's over here? That, it that plays a, a part. weird. <laughs> that plays a part, but the books are based on, I always tell people when I'm scouting, oh, they're based on, you know, Stories that happen in the Hudson Valley in New York and the North Shore of Boston. I'm pretty sure it's just the Hudson Valley. Uh-huh. Uh, they did the Is first. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Well, Because you I... don't want somebody to go out and buy the book, read it, and then be like, wait a minute. This has nothing to do with Massachusetts. I don't care. That shifty um, bearded motherfucker lied to me. Yep. Oh, I'm going to play my that asshole played ACDC me. really loud. Highway to hell. Yeah, so they, they I think the, the stories take place in the Hudson Valley. They did the first five or six years of these. Uh-huh in the Hudson Valley and then I guess 
Hudson Valley. No offense to anybody in the Hudson Valley, but it's it's not the North Shore of Boston. North Shore of Boston is gorgeous. So yeah, they they made the switch over to Massachusetts about four years ago, and I mean we get to just film in how gorgeous find, gorgeous places every day. How did you find this company making these movies over here? Uh, Central Booking. Okay, I was now, signed up with uh, with Tim over in Canton. And you got started right in the beginning of the the book saga being made because you said you've done seventeen of them. I've done seventeen. There's thirty five in total. So they did the first however many in New York, and then they did the other seventeen here. Oh, okay. So you haven't been at it from the beginning? No. Of the book saga? No, no. Okay. But they're going to continue making them as long as the books are being written. I think this next summer might be the last year. I'm not sure, though. Oh, but you said that they do how many movies a year? They're going to be doing three this summer. Okay. So I don't know if I'm going to be back for those or if I'm just going to stay in Germany and work there. Find other things? Yeah. There was a guy who put together a horror film festival in Somerville. Um, and it was at like in Foxborough for like one year and then moved to Somerville for a couple of years who works for Nintendo, German, Germany, Nintendo, or whatever it's called. Met his wife there. Germany, Nintendo. Nintendo of Germany. Yeah. Cause there's Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Japan. There's Nintendo of England. There's Nintendo of Nintendo has, uh, locations like in a lot of places working on mobile, um, DS games. With all those places, you'd think they'd be able to produce a number of, NES classics yeah, so that I could go to the store and buy one. <laughs> you did with the Super NES now? Of course. I want both of them. And I go anytime I look. No, no, sorry. Oh, go on eBay. 300 bucks. No. Why would you want that? Just buy an old Super Nintendo, which don't cost that much. It's got the much. games. I don't want to have to blow in the games. You just press a button. I was at the Dollar Tree or uh, Family Dollar. They have that emulator of the Sega. And it's got like 80 games built into it. Oh, that sounds great. I almost bought that because it's like it's a bunch of games bucks. I kind of want. $40. <laughs> That's nothing. Yeah. 80 games for 40 bucks? Yeah. And it, I assume it has an HDMI cord like the old system did not. I think it does. I and would, there's a slot at the top for you to stick in games that are not emulated into it. So if you have that old Batman Returns cool game or oh, that's you know, basically a lot of – basically let's just say games that were copywritten, you know what I mean, with copywritten characters like Batman – or, you know, Disney movie like Aladdin, you know, a lot of the Aladdin game, the, the Lion King game were a lot of fun by Capcom. The Aladdin but game. But they're not going to be emulated into it because those are owned by Capcom. So these are all games that were produced by Sega, like Kid Chameleon and the Sonic games and, and Fantasy Star, which are still great games. But you're not going to get any of the games that were made by a third party. So that I think that's really cool that they give you the slot to stick in that copy of Batman Returns or, or Maximum Carnage, you know. Um, and yeah, I'm listening to comic book games or whatever, but you know, those games were still a lot. I'm of fun. sure there's other games. Era. Yeah, comic book games were fantastic back on the old, uh, the old, the old Nintendo, the old NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis days. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I still want the Texas Chainsaw Atari game. I have a copy of that. What? Yeah, but I have oh. that in Hall Halloween. Really? Yeah. Want to come over and play it before you leave? I want to see it. <laughs> You basically just run around the screen with the, the chainsaw that like loops like Yeah, this. it looks terrible. It oh, looks I have the alien game. There was an actual alien game. For Sega? No, for Atari. You are running around a maze, and this spider-looking thing follows you, but the cartridge has the egg and the alien logo. That was the alien game for Atari. Oh, that sounds great. Where's the Atari classic? <laughs> I think the classic. spider thing might be a face hugger. I'm not sure. <laughs> They have King Kong. They had King they had a lot of really like horror games out for the old Atari that I was shocked to find in my uh, I didn't roommate's even basement. That. He has every single Atari game, and it's and it's uh you know it's like Frankenstein and Dracula and Alien and Halloween and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre one has the wizard like sticker on it because there was never a Halloween sticker produced. The box may have said it. The Halloween one though was one of the handwritten Halloween stickers. <laughs> Because there's two versions you can find. One with the wizard sticker on it, uh, or the label that just says Halloween. <laughs> that they were so lazy. <laughs> I prefer the just the label. That would be great. He's like, oh, would you get this? Oh, some guy in an alley. And nowadays, like, can you believe E.T. is worth a lot of money if you could find one on eBay? If you go dig it up in the, the desert or whatever the, it was? Well, those are worth a lot more, but you have to prove that you were actually that, that it came from there. Um, just go dig a hole, take pictures with, with are you. Are they still there? <laughs> I don't know. I think they dug them up. I think they got them all up and gave them away to everyone Bastards. who showed up for it. Because that was the like historic event in video game history. It was just like, oh shit, that's actually true? Yeah, the angry video game nerd found it. Because he was the one who found it. Oh, I didn't, yeah. Yeah, he was making that movie as a joke. And then all of a sudden he actually went digging for it. And then 
it was like holy shit. I wouldn't have told anybody. I would have just filled there during sold like it. the loca- the un- the unearthing. You know what I mean? And he actually got the guy who developed it, the the one responsible that that was tasked with the six weeks to put it together because he thought of it like his Christmas Carol. You know that story, right? Charles Dickens had put together the Christmas Carol in six weeks, and everyone was like, "You're freaking crazy!" Nowadays, putting together a book in six weeks is pff, that's no problem. The time the Christmas Carol was out, Jesus Christ! Yeah. He was up to his eyeballs in debt trying to get that thing put together. And then what happened? 10,000 copies on December 19th, 1846. Wow, there's your Christmas history lesson. <laughs> Do you know how I know that? Because I just saw The Man Who Invented Christmas. <laughs> what is that? It's a movie in theaters right now. Um, uh, I don't know who plays Charles Dickens, but the guy, uh, he talks to kind of like, did you see Hitchcock with Anthony Hopkins? I did. Okay, you know how he talks to Ed Gein? He talks to the ghosts and Scrooge. And Scrooge is played by Christopher Plummer. So he's trying to put together... Oliver Twist was a huge hit for him. He went on a tour of America to promote Oliver Twist and then decided to write like a uh, uh, a pro um, a look at America from a Britain's perspective book. And it was horribly reviewed in America. Like people are throwing it in the streets in fires or whatever. Long before the Nazis were doing it and the Americans were doing it. Well, that just goes back to my theory that no one wants to hear your opinion on America unless you're American. Dan Stevens plays That's Carl just, Dickens? Like you go to the you go down south and you're a British guy and you're like, well, let me tell you what I think about America's problems. Also, saw, they're stars, gonna pull a shotgun on you and cornhole you. Ian uh, McNeese, uh, Jonathan Price, Donald Something, Bill Patterson, uh, a lot of British actors that you might see and stuff. The movie was directed by B H A R A T N A L L U R I, a name I cannot pronounce and I'm not even gonna try. One more time. B H A R A T. Baharet, that's probably how it's pronounced, Nal Uri, N-A-L-L-U-R-I, he is from India. No, he's from Wisconsin, that sounds like a name from Wisconsin. And he directed several episodes of MI5, he directed The Crow Salvation. (laughs) Is that the one with Edward Furlong? Oh, please let it be the one with Edward Furlong. I can't believe this, like one of the first things he ever directed was The Crow Salvation, now he's directing The Man Who Invented Christmas, which I actually really What was the second Crow? Uh, No, this was with uh, Eric Mavis and Kristen Dunst. This is just before Spider-Man came out. Okay, so that's the third Crow movie. The third one, after City of Angels, and the four, uh, The Crow, uh, Wicked Prayer. Oh, God. Who I want to know who thought it was a good idea to put Edward Furlong as the crow. You know who made a better crow? His co-star, David Boreanaz. <laughs> he was Angel, the vampire. Yeah. You know? Anybody, anybody, Chris, and, you or way, I so, would have been a better crow than Edward Furlong. It also Furlong. stars the amazing Sharknado actress, Tara Reid. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Which, as much fun as we can make of Tara Reid, I mean, she's making the Sharknado movies every year. I mean, she's, hey, she's making money. Good like, for her. Exploded once again with her fifty dollar autographs at convention. Fifty dollars for Tara Reed? <laughs> if it was ten years ago, she'd make you a sandwich and jerky waff for fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as her co-star Danny Trejo, who when he was at Rock and Shock was thirty bucks. I think Danny I Trejo, by the way, plays. Get this: Danny Trejo plays um, Eddie Furlong's uncle in the movie. <laughs> I remember, I think... He's like the guy who tells him about the crow. The guy who's just like, you came back, you're the crow now. Paint your face this way and go after the Yeah, he's guy. like, here, I got you. I went to, the, I went to uh, Party City, <laughs> and I got you the makeup. So and it was good. Hot Topic. <laughs> yeah, and I got you a shirt from Hot Topic. Because in 2005, Hot Topic was selling that type of clothing. <laughs> now just act terribly. Now go to a Hot Topic. It's a Doctor Who, Star Wars, Nightmare Before Christmas, Supernatural, Pop Culture Store. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> but seriously, David Boreanaz was the villain in the movie. He was Loke, Crash, Luke spelled L-U-C, Death and Satan. Yeah, no, I remember, I was like, wait a minute, so wait, he's supposed to be the devil in this? Like, that's a little bit of a, a step up from, all right, this guy killed me to, oh, this guy summoned the devil. And then there was the Crow Purgatory. Eddie Furlong. Did you ever see this? What is it? The Crow Purgatory. Who's in it? Is it Eddie Furlong again? I'll, I'll watch it if it's Edward Furlong. No, it stars David Lockhart. Oh, it's a fan film. I think it's a fan film, but it was... It's, it, it, no more fan films. It had a $10,000 budget, so it definitely was a fan film. People should not be making fan films. 
Get it out. Yeah, this looks like a fan film, but it has no information about it on IMDb. Explores new sides of the Crow myth and introduces brand new characters. Like, here's a Crow movie they could not make today because people are tired of seeing this. Once One of the Crow movies, at the time they were pumping these terrible sequels out, people were like, do the female Crow story. You would not be able to make the female Crow movie today. Why? Because it's a rape story. And yes, that is part of uh, Shelley's backstory and how she's killed eventually in the Crow story. But mm-hmm. she's like the side character. Whereas if this is the main female character getting raped and then killed and then turned into the Crow, the minds of, of female comic book fans would explode all over the internet in hate, anger, and just... And all their, their male feminist allies, too. Uh, yes. Who will, who will then, no doubt, be picked up for being creeps. And then, of course, there was The Crow, <laughs> Stairway to Heaven, which ran from 1998 to 1999 for one season. They got canceled. Oh, I remember. I remember. Which I actually liked. I, didn't, I never saw it, but we had the about 40 of those box sets at Movie Stop. Yes, I remember that. I should have picked one up. Uh, God, I wish I did that Movie Stop when they are going out of business. <laughs> but uh, The Crow on that was played by Mark Dak. Cascos. He played Eric Draven. 22 episodes they did. One season of. This that is seems back like when a... they were due 22 episode seasons. Oh yeah, he was in Double Dragon. He was Jimmy Lee. Seems like a long time to get revenge. 22 episodes. In uh... Oh, he was on Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. recently. That's where I recognize him from. I was like, this character, Guy Gira, Gira, was on Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I was like, God, he looks familiar. Where is he from? Oh, it's the guy for The Crow. He was on the remake of Hawaii Five-0. He was on Iron Chef. Oh, he was the ch- oh, he's the chairman on the American Iron Chef. Ah, okay. Like, every time I watched the American Iron Chef, because I liked it as much as I liked the Japanese version, I was like, "Why the hell does the chairman look so familiar?" But I never bothered to look into like who he was. He was the freaking crow, and he's one of the two brothers in Double Dragon. <laughs> wow. Okay. He was on the I show didn't. Two hundred and fifty episodes. As the chairman, it was just like, ah, ingredient, squid, lamb, chicken, oysters. Can you imagine an easier gig? It's just being the host of a show. Of just just being being the host where you lift up the top of something and just go. You don't just lift it up. You're just like, ah. Breast milk. (laughs) You know, that's, that's, oh, 250 episodes. He's probably on set for four hours. Oh my God. This guy's career is actually kind of cool. Now that I know that. Uh, Stargate Atlantis. Um, he was the Thai boxer in the TV series The Legend of Bruce Lee. I didn't know that was a TV series. Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom. <laughs> the the video game, not the movie. Oh, okay. He was a police cadet in seven episodes of General Hospital. That's how he got his start, actually. Oh, that's where I recognize him from. He was on an episode of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, he was in Drive. He was in Drive. He was in I Am Omega, the... Um, the ripoff of I Am Legend? Yes. <laughs> Ooh. The ripoff of both I Am Legend and the Omega Man. Right. <laughs> Another movie you carried heavily in stock at Movie Stop. What was the number one movie at Movie Stop that you could not freaking get rid of but had hundreds of freaking copies of? The Grudge to Part 2. The Grudge... The... Uh, Sarah Michelle, right? Mm-hmm. Sarah Michelle Geller, excuse me. Was she? I don't know if she was in the second one she or not. She was in the second one in a mental institute. It was that and the two Matrix sequels. You could not get rid of We them. had boxes, hundreds and hundreds in the back. And Why didn't you just like... Throw them in the trash? I don't know. Call Movie Stop Corporate and be like... Oh, I did. I did. You and did? They, of course. I'd say, why say? are you guys sending me more of these? I have 50 copies of Matrix... <laughs> Reshitulating or whatever the hell it's called. Reloaded and Reloaded. Uh, remastered? No, re revolution. There we go. Yeah. And what a revolution. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No. And they were I think two ninety nine. I was like, you could make these fifty cents and Just people wait. wouldn't buy it. In two years, because this is twenty seventeen, it'll be the twentieth anniversary of the Matrix. You know they're putting it back in theaters. <laughs> well, the first one wasn't bad. I would love to see the freaking Bill and Ted third film. Where is it? Bill and Ted are older. I was just thinking about this the other day. The Matrix put back in theater. I don't give a shit about the Matrix being put back in theater. Where's Alex Winter? Yeah. And can we get a freaked part two? And you know what? I I I, do you remember I used to work at um, Entertainment Cinema in Lemonster? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I think this was. I think it was after you left because I started. I was the movie manager. I was the uh, Midnight Movie Manager. I remember that, yeah. Okay, uh, so it was just about as you were leaving. 
And I got into an argument with one of the women there that worked there about promoting or putting into the Midnight Movie lineup that we did, Saw. And she's just like, there are a lot of Saw fans that would love to see that as a Midnight Movie. And I'm like, no, there aren't, okay? And sure enough, when Saw got back put back in theaters for its 10th anniversary, yeah, it made some money. But then look what happened this year. The Saw sequel finally came out, and it was the disaster film. Did you see it? No pun intended to the movie currently in theater starring James Franco. Which I saw earlier today. I, I want to see it. Oh, it's very the good. Room, so the, the room, room is, is terrible. It's wonderful. It's, such a it's God's <laughs> gift. That's how you know God exists, because the room exists. Oh, hi, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's laughing at that movie. I have cancer. Johnny hit me. <laughs> Is that how it segues? I think no. It's um yeah, something like that. Yeah, and then they never reference again. I did not hit her. Oh hi John or hi Mark. <laughs> why what? are they playing football in there? Is that explained in the disaster movie? Like why are they playing football in their tuxedos? Not not so much. But there's a book that the movie is the disaster artist is based on the book. The room. The, the room. Uh, no. The Room, they made the movie, and then Sestero, Greg Sestero, is the main guy besides... Danny Franco. Yeah. Okay. He, um... Right? Is that, is that his name? I don't know. The other Franco that's not James Franco. Yeah. The one that's in 21 and 22 Jump Street. Yes. <laughs> the one who's not as good of an actor. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, so, th- the character he's playing in this movie wrote a book. Yeah. And it's all about how he met Tommy Wiseau and how all the making of the movie. And the book, read the book, because it's you won't believe that this is like a real character and then you like have to remind yourself. He spent $6 this million is, dollars on the room. He made it back eventually. How the hell do you spend $6 million on that? Is it because it's that expensive to shoot in LA? No, he bought all the equipment. He bought all the equipment where normally on movies you rent the equipment. Yeah. He bought it all outright. That cost $6 million? No, no. But then he bought an HD camera and a film camera to run next to each other for some reason. So he had to buy a new rig for that. Uh-huh. And then that's two different camera crews to run those two things. Someone told me it's because he shot in L.A. And L.A. is insanely expensive to no, shoot. He had a deal where at the uh, the place that he bought all the equipment, he yeah. just filmed on their lot. Oh. Okay. So he spent a lot of money on the uh, just the equipment. And then I think he, uh, you know, he went 52 days or just, 58 days or something. They were supposed to be a 40-day shoot. He went to almost 60 if I could make a movie as memorable as The Room, I would be I would be very happy with it. And then someone make the disaster artist equivalent. It was it was really good. I want to see. I was I've surprised because I thought from all the trailers I was like, oh, it's just going to be a jokey, <coughs> bullshit movie. But no, it was good. It was it was a real movie. Yeah, Jane real... Franco is being considered for her best actor. No, really? Yes, really? Yeah. Oh, that would be funny if yeah. Tommy Wiseau was at the Academy Awards. That'd be funny if he brings up his date. You know what I mean? Holding hands, or, they, or the academy. They could just them, play football on stage. Like, okay, Tommy, we're gonna tell you a secret. James is gonna get the award, and we want you to be the presenter of the best picture, or the best actor award. Oh. That would be hilarious because when Ben Affleck won the Golden Globe for uh, Argo, the guy who presented the best actor award was the real life Tony uh, Mendez, the CIA, the former CIA agent. Doesn't that kind of give away who's gonna yeah, win? Yeah, it did give it away. A lot of people are like, oh, it's, who is this, Tony Mendez? Oh, that means Ben Affleck's winning the award. Batfleck. <laughs> Batfleck was a joke in Justice League. Oh, God. They not made not Batman a joke. God, let's not even get into it. Yeah, they're making another one, or they made another one. It's already been filmed, right? What? The Justice League 2. They already filmed? They had to have. They make these movies back to back. No. I mean, they're going to get Dark Side in the fucking films. <laughs> I mean, as long I mean, as Dark... I we're getting Thanos before Dark Side because there is no trailer for a Justice League 2 yet. So if it is coming out, it's not coming out until Christmas, or, or the holiday at least, next year. And we already know Avengers is coming out May 3rd. I mean, that was at the end of the trailer. <laughs> I thought they were uh, refoculating the uh, DC they... Universe because Justice League underperformed. That's what I read recently. The, the, that, that the gonna... Disney Universe? The DC Universe. Oh, yeah, I don't care. The point is that we're going to have, <laughs> at the beginning of May, we have the Avengers. Memorial Day weekend, Solo. The poster. I went to go see uh, uh, The Man Who Invented Christmas, and the poster's up, Solo, A Star Wars Tale. Oh. Han Solo's origin story. Who's directing that again? Uh, was some other guy, I don't know, I and now it's Ron Howard. Because he walked off the set. If if uh, Henry Not Winkler a does a cameo. Disney, but 
I mean, I'll go see it if Henry Winkler reprises his role as the Fonz. The Fonz like, in space. Like, hey, Solo, hey. Yeah, that would be great. He could teach him all how cool Han Solo is. He could have learned hey, it all from... Hey, we to get Lando back. We haven't had Lando in any of the uh, the new films. Everyone's like, um, and so is there a funeral for Han? Oh, no, this movie, The Last Jedi, takes place within seconds after the other one. So the evil empire, whatever the hell they call it, the First Order, immediately goes to Those are the, the rebels, good guys. And so it's like the Empire Strikes Back all over again. Those are the good guys. The First Order are the good guys. You and Donald Trump would say that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, so you think this is going to be the one where the bad guys prevail at the end to set up the third movie? Yeah, most likely. I, I think, I mean, they have given away too much in the trailer, unless it's a dream sequence, which was just, by the way, if you watch the first six Star Wars movies, they're pretty linear in their, 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 the films themselves. Yes, they jump timelines, like one and two, there's ten years, and so on and so forth. Uh, and there's twenty years between uh, uh, three and four, but... The films themselves all take place within like a day or two or a week at least. There's no flashback to the past. Rogue One had a time jump within the film of like 20 years or something like that for uh, the girl to become, you know, an adult. Uh, Jyn Erso. What a great ending to that movie. Everyone dies, yes. Yeah, it was perfect. I was like, that. yeah, because all these I characters love it. have to die in order I'd, for this film to go on. Everything doesn't need to be a happy ending. But, you know, what? they already said like, like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Because he's going to get his own solo movie, where which I think would be kind of cool, especially if Ian McGregor comes back, where they're going to do like different points of like after he drops the baby off, this is what he does, and then like leading up to like you know hearing the Bathas, you know, or the 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 Tuscan Raiders assaulting Luke, and I'm like that should be the way that movie should go. Should be like I mean when he drops the baby off, they're going, okay, what do I do now? Oh, I got to find a place to live and figure out how to moisturize water and. He's gonna go live Contact in the desert. The forest, yeah. To oh, what's sounds, that? What's sounds that? Some, thrilling. Some, some farm boys getting attacked by some sand people. Is that word even allowed to be used anymore in Star Wars? Because there's some negative connotations. Dude. What sand people? Sand people? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I did don't know, you know what's okay to say anymore. Did you know people were getting upset over like the director of the Last Jedi and some p- comments he made about the porgs? And people were like, you know, like... What do you it, say about the porgs? I don't even remember, but people were, like, connecting it to, like, animal cruelty. And it's like, okay, this car- this this creature does not exist. Okay, it's a combination of a penguin... If people could stop being giant pussies <laughs> nowadays, that would be great. If people I mean, grow a... Picking a fight grow a, thing. grow a spine. Stop defending stuff. Who cares? Stop waking Live your up life. Angry and upset about everything. Have that parents that fiction. raised you right. Fiction, by the way. I don't care about real life events. Be 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 upset about real life events. You have every right to be. World's kind of a mess sometimes, and we're not going to get into the reasons why. Fiction. We don't need to wake up every day and be like, "Oh, I'm not being represented correctly in the trailer for the the, the science fiction thing that will never ever happen in my life." Oh, they put Scarlett Johansson in a skin tight suit. Oh yeah, I'm going to be very upset about this. I would have... love a movie that was not porno Just... called Nipples. Where the entire movie was a basic, stupid... You could make it a comedy, action movie. But everybody's topless? Yes. I love it. I would watch the shit out of that. And I... nobody <laughs> points out... Nobody points out that everyone is topless in the movie. Never. Have old Never. people, young people, fat people, skinny people, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think a, a topless movie would be great. And it's never mentioned. It could be... It could be a drama. Oh, it would be better if it was a drama. Like every all this very serious shit is going on. Yeah. Don't steal our idea, anybody. We we yeah. Maybe we should cut this part out. <laughs> yeah. But I'm surprised Hollywood just giving the middle finger to people who are just like, oh nipples, oh my god, haven't made this movie yet. Like a movie like Love Actually, where everyone's topless. You know what I mean? Because you're not gonna do it as an action movie. First of all, you would probably do it as a comedy, a romantic comedy, and nobody acknowledges that everyone is topless. It's just. You know what I mean? And you find some big name stars who would be like, oh, I would fucking do that in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? Like, you you start finding some really hot starlets, some really hunky stars that are like, I would do that in a heartbeat. Sign me up. You no, know what I mean? And we then want... you just put the casting call out there for hundreds of extras to be like, you know, just letting you know, you're going to walk around. Guys will have their tie on. Women will have their we want, whatever. We want some, uh, some not so good looking people in it too. Yeah, that's what I said. It would be like um, when... Um, uh, 
Scarlett Johansson cast. Uh, I want Kathy Bates in the lead role. Uh, I'm not going to comment. Scarlett Johansson <laughs> cast in that movie, that alien movie she did. She went out of her way to cast people of different body types: old, fat, young, skinny. What alien movie was Scarlett? Under Johansson? the skin. I gave it away, by the way. They did a movie. You find out she's an alien. Oh, where she's like bringing people onto this thing, where she's like doing this like really weird walking thing. She's completely nude from head to toe, and she's like making love to like people of like people with disfigurements. This one guy had like part of his face burned off. You know what I mean? And she is like basically killing them and eating them alive in this like weird. It, it's really hard to explain. At the end of the movie, she gets like shot, and then she's like pulling her skin off. She's like this black alien underneath. So it's slimy. reverse species, kind of. I mean, she's not disgusting. It's just, like, she you don't really get a good look at, like, her true alien form. It's just when she's, like, pulling her skin off, it's all this, this black. It's just black with slime on it. She doesn't have this, like, elongated face or, like, a species or with the weird tentacle nipples or anything like that. And then she's burned alive <laughs> and she dies and that's the end of the movie. But it's a really All right, so I don't movie. need to watch that. It's just, it was, like, Harold is being, like, the movie you're going to see Scarlett Johansson naked in a lot. And she did it just before she got pregnant. She was like, I'm going to get pregnant soon, so I'm going to do the movie I'm nude in. It's really good, I think. It's artistically done. And they don't overly, it's not overly sexual until she like gets into bed with somebody. And there's also really no plot to it, really, either. It's, it's really hard to explain. It's worth checking out. Yeah. I'll, but she uh, went out of her way to cast people to help with the casting because she didn't want to have like the sex scenes be with like the hunky-looking men and women. So she's in these scenes with people that you're like, these people never get work in Hollywood ever other than being in this movie. So I feel like if people look like real people, you care about them more. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's why that's a, okay. So in the early slasher, you know, Friday the 13th, all these slasher movies, they were just people. Yeah. Okay. They were younger kids. Maybe some, not always, but they were people that you would see on the street. Like but what's his name? they're all really athletic, either, either toned athletic or skinny. They no, no, no. Part three, Friday the 13th. The jokey guy. What's his name? He's got the curly hair. He's I know got the... what you're talking about. Yeah, I yeah. just can't remember his name. And then at a certain point, they're just like, all right, we're only going to have attractive people getting killed off. And while that's great, it makes you not give Shelley. a shit. You have no... Shelly. You have no sympathy for attractive people getting killed off. Oh, the girl with the, the, the fat girl on the side of the road with the banana. Jason like, stabs <laughs> her through the neck and she yeah. just squeezes the While banana. While she's eating the banana? Yeah, and she like turns the side around. Fuck you. <laughs> That's the great. It's okay, like, maybe, we, maybe we should sit back. No, should we can strap her to the roof. They say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's right. not right. <laughs> we should be laughing. That's right when Crispin Glover gets told he's a dead fuck. Right? What's his name? The little uh, Italian fellow. Yeah, a Teddy. Teddy. Teddy, who thinks he's gonna get laid. He's the only character. He doesn't actually get laid in that no, movie. No, he watches old, dancey black Ford, and white porn. And it's Crispin Glover who gets laid with one of the two Playboy twins. Were they in Playboy? I think they were. I don't remember their names. And twins? Yeah. <laughs> but I remember they were twins, right? Because he sleeps with one of them. One goes out. Yeah. One tries to leave, and her sister wants to stay around and fuck, with, fuck Kristen Glover. She tries to leave, and then she gets chucked out a window, I believe. No. The one, one of one of them gets with Kristen Glover gets thrown out the window. She gets chucked out a window. But then that's a male stunt double. Pilot. Yeah, easily. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, uh, Pamela Voorhees, who gets um, who, who's like flailing for her decapitated head. That's uh, just these giant Tom shoulders, Zabini, right? Is yeah, Tom Zabini, because you can see the knuckle, the hair on the. It's like a little mustache poking out from the the neck. <laughs> no, it's just. They built the head and like one swipe because the toothpicks were sticking up to keep the head in place while, um, you know, the final girl slices the head off. Can't you play that level or that that uh, map in the new Friday? The you 13th can play game? the part four map. Yeah, that's yeah. Phenomenal. You can play the part four map. Um, oh, by the way, it's Adrian King from part one. Okay. Yeah, she was Alice. <sighs> the Death Curse guy should have never got killed off. In Ralph. The second, Ralph, Ralph should have never got killed off in the second movie. He should have been in all of them. I'm trying to find two people with the same last name. The only two people I found are not the two characters I'm talking about. <coughs> Corey Feldman, Thad Gear. Corey Feldman, yeah. He's coming back. He's making a comeback. Kamala Moore and Carrie Moore were Tina and Terry. I don't think they were in Playboy. They don't even have Kamala's picture posted. Carrie was in the first Jim Carrey movie, Once Bitten. She was Molly the Vampire. 
Was he in that before Earth Girls Are Easy? That was his debut. Yeah, that's the movie. Because in the film it says, and introducing Jim Carrey. That was a good couple of years before Earth Girls Were Easy. The gold bloom. I think Terry is the one that... Did, wasn't Terry the one that, that got out on the lake naked? No, that was the girlfriend of... That's the girl who gets jacked in the... Uh... She gets pissed at the guy because he's flirting with the other twin. Correct. And she just like she's like, oh, I'll go. He'll come after me. Yeah. And, and then a, she and goes a, out and she gets housed in and the, uh, the raft. Many stories that she had to be on that raft for like hours, and her face was turning blue, and she was freezing to death. And the director was just like, "No, we got to keep you out there. We got to continue filming." Hey. And the Jason actor was like, "Fuck this! She's dying out there." Like he was getting really pissed at the director because uh, she was like literally turning blue. You want to be a star? <laughs> Shut get up. naked and get in the raft. Get in the raft. You want to be a star, kid? <laughs> Topless. That was basically the attitude of the director. That's why a lot of people didn't like him. But the 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 actor who played Jason was getting pissed because she was turning blue. Is that the? I think the fourth one's where the guy gets the uh, the spear in the dick too, right? And he gets lifted out of the water. He it's goes guy, looking for her. Yeah. And he, he, he's wearing his, his oh, yeah. cut-off she, jeans. Uh, he, he goes out <laughs> he goes in the water, the water. and sees her dead and then tries to get back. And that's when and Jason then like, just spears him right in the fucking junk. Right in the the dingus. Right in the dick. I don't know if it's the worst death. That or the uh, the poor uh, wheelchair kid who gets it right in the head. Which, by the way, <laughs> one of the new characters coming out is the wheelchair character in the Friday the 13th game. No. Because they're doing all the actors who died. That's why there's so much focus on the part three Jason because he's the out of all the Jasons... All 12 of them, or whatever, 12, right? Yeah, 12, 12 yep. or 13, 14, because there was stunt doubles. Like, part two, Jason has, like, two actors that are always like, I'm the real Jason. No, I played eight more scenes. I bet both of them. They bo- they're both very heavy at conventions. Like, aren't you going to get an autograph? I got a lot of autographs here. I'm like, jeez. Yeah, I'll give you $5 for it. Not 40 No. forty dollars $40. Part three, Jason. Uh, part six, Jason lives next to you. Is only thirty. Why are you forty? Oh, because you're the first adult, Jason. And they label themselves as like first Jason in the mask, first Jason who kills. That's that's how it's labeled. That. So I mean, one if, guy labels himself as Jason in the mask, the first adult Jason. The other one labels himself as the first Jason who kills. And I'm like, I get it. People need to make a living, and this is something that they have to <laughs> hold on to. And I'm sure some people will pay it, but not me. He's also the thirty Jason. forty dollars for an autograph. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, is like the make Jason, me a sandwich too. Um, the Jason who is um, the one who's in the burlap sack also lives. He's also always promoting because it's his Jason who gets unmasked. You know what I'm talking about? Well, then he's the Jason that counts. Yeah, but it's constantly argued back and forth. Like Tony Moran will always say, "I am the Halloween Michael Myers from the original," and I'm like, "Aren't there like for everything I read?" There were 12 people who played Michael Myers in that, including Jamie Lee Curtis and John Carpenter. He's just the guy who got his mask taken off. Yeah. So that's what counts. Yeah. Okay, so it's Warrington Gillette is one Jason, and then there's, like, the Jason stuntman. So it was Warrington Gillette who was at Super Mega Fest, which is where I thought I saw you the last time. No, I didn't end up going. Yeah, I know. There were no porn stars there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, you notice how quickly they've turned that com- turned tuned that completely down to nobody. Don't they just have like uh, so writers in the basement and... for a little while because it's like, oh, we can't have the porn stars upstairs with like the actress who played Annie because all the little girls want to see Annie, but they don't want to look over and see some girl with her fucking like legs spread open and getting like cummed on her face. I don't think anybody got their face cummed on at Super Mega Fest. <laughs> Josh, if you could make one movie, you should make a Hanukkah horror movie because there is none. Now, I don't recommend making it in Germany, though. I will say, no, no, I'm good. You don't want to make a movie about a killer rabbi? He's got a he's got a he dreidels into people, and, and he's got a menorah with knives on it. I think, especially nowadays, you would have to be a Jewish person to make that movie. Anything. Oh, the whole cast. I, has I to think be Jew- number one, Jewish? people will bitch about you know. Just like everything else now, representation or you don't know their experiences. And as someone who's not Jewish, I think any way that I would make it as respectful as possible, it would still, somebody would find something to be like, oh. Okay. So it wouldn't be that hard to do it. And I'm just, because we're on the cusp of Hanukkah right now, is in Hanukkah, I think Hanukkah starts soon, next week actually. I'd have to ask Mitch Gordon, who runs Shereem, another show here at WCUW, but when Hanukkah starts, but I believe Hanukkah does start next weekend. We always bring it up on his show, why is it there a Hanukkah horror movie? 
Out of all the horror movies made about holidays, not just what Christmas. Would be, what would be the villain? I mean, we just got the newest one, Better Watch Out, is now in Redbox, being claimed as like the next big horror. Is that good? I don't I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to rent it for me and my girlfriend to watch. Yeah. Stars nobody I know. I think I've seen the cover of it. It's got like it looks like the exact yeah, same boy, cover as the Black Christmas girl, The remake. girl's holding a knife. They're cowering behind a couch. On a quiet suburban street, a babysitter must defend a 12-year-old boy from intruders only to discover it's far from a normal home invasion. So it's like Killer Santa Claus maybe, but I don't know anything about it. I don't want to be spoiled about it. Again, it stars nobody I know. Uh, the main star is Olivia Day. Is it Radar? J-O-N-G-E. No, no, it's Radar. Yeah, there we go. All right, it's Radar. I'll watch She's that. very pretty. She's got, one, she's got one of those like backless dresses on. Oh, she was in The Visit. She was the sister in The Visit. What is The Visit? Really? The M. Night Shyamalan movie about the kids that go to visit their grandparents just to find out there's something else going on with the grand Their grandparents are acting like super weird and everything. I haven't seen any. Okay, spoiler alert for a movie that's three years old by now. I've, I've not seen any Shyamalan okay. movies the visit, for years. The, these, um, the brother and sister go to visit their grandparents who have their mother's been estranged from for years, but they've reconnected. They go to visit them and their grandparents act super weird the entire movie just to find out. And there's clues, of course, throughout the entire movie to tell you what's really going on that their grandparents are dead, were murdered by these people, and they've taken their identities over. There's, like, clues throughout the movie that kind of suspect this. You find out their grandparents used to be volunteers at a mental institution. Is this the twist? Yes. <laughs> and that what you, when you find it out is when the mother... What a twist. When they were holding up pictures of gran- with the, that they took with them and their grandparents over Skype to their mother, and their, their mother's like, those aren't your grandparents. Hmm. That's the twist. It was... It reignited is it his as good career as the happening? because that movie grossed a lot of money and got him to make Split. Did it? Yeah, I don't remember this movie. And Split was made, it in theaters? Split was a huge. Yeah, it was in theaters. In and Split was in theaters this past. I January. remember Split. I didn't see it, it has but the big that was with, uh, Shyamalan at too. The end. It takes place in the Unbreakable universe. Ah. And the next movie he's making is Unbreakable too. Unbreakable was okay. Um, she was also in Will and Hiding. Don't ask me. Big star. Well, no, big fucking girl, star. She's from Australia. Very young, born in 1998. 1998. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Feel so old. <laughs> but yeah, she's the sister of that movie. Will. I don't know what Will was. Oh, Will is the TNT series about um, William Shakespeare. I'm not watching anything that calls <laughs> William Shakespeare Will. I, they're trying to be like uh, the Da Vinci Demons, where it's like the young leather jacket wearing uh, Leonardo Da Vinci with his goatee. Could everybody just stop making <laughs> shit? That would be great. Okay, Le- Da Vinci Demons was very good because it explains a lot of like where his eccentric like artistic style comes from, and it's also during a time period there's no real recorded history about Leonardo Da Vinci, so they could kind of make it up as they went along. Which made a lot of sense. It was from David S. Goyer, the, the writer of the Batman trilogy that you love so much. Oh, Christopher Nolan's? Yeah. Ooh. He was also the writer of uh, Blade Trinity. <laughs> Starring Triple H, WWE yeah. champion. <laughs> I think he's also the producer of Gotham. <laughs> uh, what a... Which is one of the worst trash TV shows I watch. It's it's garbage. I watched the first season. But he also wrote Batman vs. Superman. I actually like Batman vs. Superman. What the fuck is wrong with you? I I didn't <laughs> I didn't go in expecting much. Van and Go. what I got was, oh, okay. It was all right. He's also write, writing uh, the Sandman movie, which has been developed in hell forever. Krypton, which is the story of Superman's grandfather. <laughs> yes, it's the story of Superman's grandfather and basically Jor-El growing up. No, I'm not interested. <laughs> Come on, you know. I'll oh, count. No, but thanks. you you love Batman versus Superman, but not. I didn't say I loved it. It was it was what I expected, which was a big popcorn bullshit movie. I was entertained, and the R-rated cut was good. Not really. Yeah, it's better than Justice League. Jesse Eisenberg was the worst thing about that movie. Yeah, but he's usually the worst thing about most movies that he's in. And this was the worst thing about this mo- that movie. And I play a clip here of Why did you say that name? The worst part. No, Lois Lane is a terrible character yes. in those in those that DCU universe. Yeah, she is awful. Yeah, it makes me really appreciate Margot Kidder because oh, God. another the worst thing about that movie, and she's getting her own animated series. Margot Margot Margo Kidder, yeah, is. really, yeah, nice, good for her. Great, nobody cares. I think they just overplayed Harley Quinn to death now. 
Oh yeah, way too much. I don't, it's like let it go the away worst, for a while. The worst Joker in the history of Jokers. Oh yeah, Jared Leto should be ashamed of. Dave, uh, who's it? David Ayers, the director. Yeah, be ashamed of himself. That Joker was dog shit. No kidding. Fetishizer. Yeah, I just I can't believe that moving forward they were like, oh, the biggest villain in the entire company. Entire all the comics, Joker. We're gonna make him be a gangster. A gangster, which looked like circa you know 1988 with the gold chain, and the teeth, and the grill, in the, in the car, and like what the fuck is this? Well, and I mean, they, they, they try to explain the grill that Batman had punched out his front teeth, and that's why he has to wear. That's it. Uh, the grill is the least awful. thing. The tattoos. The tattoos. Number one. He's like, not even la- that. That lap. Ah, ah, ah. It's all. Terrible. I'm like. Is, is that the laugh, really? All terrible. Why couldn't you just get Mark Hamill to dub him over? That would have been tolerable. Because Mark Hamill's got the greatest Joker laugh ever. Easily. Next to Cesar Romero. <laughs> <laughs> Cesar Romero's laugh was comically ridiculous for the time. I think what they need to do is introduce some, you know, maybe when Darkseid comes incorporates another universe and then we can get a different joker Did to replace Ledger this shit now that i'm trying to remember i don't yeah. remember him laughing though like not Hamill. yeah yeah no he laughed he did. definitely you remember the scene where he's torturing the guy dressed like batman oh yeah that's it though right it was a good laugh solid uh, laugh it's better than jared leto's laugh that's damn sure yeah no jack nicholson had a great laugh you know too. one of my biggest videos on my youtube channel is is um the the the, the black actor who's in the movie who's like i'm tired of this clown and then gets the pencil into the head uh who's also spawn in the spawn movie oh yeah uh, michael T- jai white yes and he was bronze tiger on um uh arrow for a couple episodes and he uh, doesn't age no, and he's I love the that exact guy. Anything, same since Spawn. That is my number one watched video on YouTube because we recorded his entire panel at the uh, TerraCon in 2014 because he was there for you know as a as a horror actor because he was Spawn. So where is Spawn the remake? I want <laughs> I want a good Spawn movie where Malboja's mouth, you know, fits Farley's with the words. Doing it. He's gonna do it himself. Good, good. Have Tommy Wiseau do it himself. I'm like, great. You finance your own movie like Spawn. You got two hundred million dollars. That's how much a Spawn movie is going to cost these days. Have Tommy Wiseau play Spawn. Please, no CGI cape, because <laughs> I got sick and tired of Batman and Superman CGI cape in their movies. So, Josh, I'm going to miss you profoundly. Hopefully, you'll come back to the United States. If you're back in town, rec- uh, if you're back in town filming one of your, um, you know, Harlequin novels. <laughs> <laughs> What are your amazing Fabio romance novels of of uh, the German people? Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you'll you'll uh, let us know. Stop of course, for a visit. yeah. Maybe this summer we'll see. Uh, nothing set in stone, but I will be in Germany. Are you making Pink Sock too, Electric Boogaloo? No, but <laughs> we do have a feature length script for Pink Sock, and uh, that's your baby, right? That's your. I'm, I that's think your Toxic I, Avenger. I think I might just make it into a book. Because I don't know that the, what about the movie's a ever going to happen. Color, you know, maybe a coloring book. No. Oh <laughs> man, it's it, the script. If you thought the the short was gross and like in bad taste, then the the, yeah, the feature is just so much worse. But you could like market the shit out of this as like with like very silly ways, like a coloring book for adults. Because coloring books for adults are huge fucking things nowadays. Are they really? Yeah. I don't want to color anything. <laughs> Fuck that. I, I don't have crayons. As long as it's offensive and there are a lot of you know adult things in it you just want to see cartoon tits no yes no yes yes you had those real boobs in the last one yeah oh that actress Mm mm-hmm what's her name what is her name (laughs) (laughs) it was it was like eight years ago she's on your business card uh jessica yes jessica yep i'm sure you can find somebody in germany (laughs) oh yeah no and i mean maybe i don't We'll see what happens. Maybe there's a pink sock feature. Maybe there's a book. Who knows? We're working on a stuff. A book. Like a novel? A novel. Or a comic book? A novel. A novel. I don't think that would work as well as a comic book. I'll do both. Who cares? Why not? You're going to make toys? <laughs> if I ever make it into something, then maybe toys will come. But, I mean, it's a, it's a movie about Real butt toys sex. or sex toys? <laughs> maybe both we'll see pinksockmovie.com like an action figure <laughs> you pr- 
press it or whatever, and something comes out. The a pink. If it gets really popular, pink sock. You know, dildo. Yes. There you go. Or butt plug. Yes. There we go. All right. Now we're marketing. Setting it on a, a good note. Ending on a good note. Yes. For this holiday season. That's right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Full of I knocked in mine shots. And uh, maybe we'll see you next summer.